Hello, Funsters on Facebook. It's uh, Steve Barrett here, uh, Editor-in-Chief of PR Week, and uh, we are set to do our weekly podcast, The PR Week, and uh, so hope you're going to enjoy the show. We've got an amazing guest this week. We've got Lindsay Stein back. New editor of Campaign US. Lindsay, how are you doing? I'm great. And I, you know, I miss these podcasts and your lovely openings. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> we're getting ready to do... This is the false opening for Facebook, but it's great to have you back. And uh, we'll talk more about uh, what you're doing on Campaign in the interview. But uh, yeah, it's been a while. What, three years? Yeah, two and a half? A little two and a half, yeah. Yeah, so remember, no swearing. <laughs> We're on there was one time. <laughs> <laughs> We're on Facebook now, live, so it's not we can't edit it out. Um, and Frank Washcook's here. How are you doing, Frank? I'm well. Thank you for having me on. Talk us through the beard. Is this a through the beard? The beard. Is this a permanent uh, thing? See. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. You know, I I don't. Let's say I don't quite have the ability to grow a beard like a lot of people do, but I want to. Uh, Is this like? I want to give it a try. He, he makes him young. look even more gruff and handsome, I'm sure you'll agree, <laughs> yes. uh, viewers, on Facebook. More gruff than handsome. Well, that's okay. I'll take what I can He's get. Got many fans, as the wash cook. That's true. Um, uh, especially of his breakfast briefing every morning. And Check proud we are of all of them. We are. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk to Lindsay about <laughs> <laughs> her role on campaign. And uh, she was at the four A's this week and uh, various other big stories. And WPP's drinking guidelines. Looking forward to that one. Story Frank did. Not as much as I am. So if you've got any comments, uh, questions, put them in the feed. Please be nice. No need to be snarky. And uh, we'll get the show going when Perry behind the dials... And Molly, special guest this week, behind the dials, um, when, they, when I get the signal. Hello and welcome to the PR Week, PR Week's regular weekly roundup of everything that matters in the worlds of PR and communications. My name's Steve Barrett, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of PR Week, going to guide you gently through the next 20, 25 minutes of a special show for us listeners. We have a special guest this week. We've got Lindsay Stein. She's come back home, everyone. She is the new US editor of Campaign, and it's really great to have you back at Haymarket, Linz. How are you doing? Thank you. It's great to be here, and that is the opening I missed. Do you? Yes, I yeah, did. I missed that. It's been a while since we had you on. Lindsay, of course, used to be a senior reporter on PR Week, a cub reporter, went all the way up the ranks, got a nice move somewhere else so we won't mention. Learned a lot, did some great stuff, and now she's back uh, leading campaign in the US. So we're going to find out all about that. I'm very excited to have her with us. We're just as excited, of course, to have our regular correspondent, PR Week and MM&M's news director, Frank Washcook. How are you doing, Frank? I'm well. Thank you for uh, inviting me on this week. It's I wouldn't have the show without you. If you're available, you, you've got the slot. You're too kind. And um, podcast viewers won't be able to... Uh, see this but um those who watch it on facebook live will, will notice frank sporting a new beard so uh he, he brings it's not even, much of one yet it though. brings We're even more there. gravitas to to you i think frank so uh yes good good effort there we're going to talk about the four a's conference uh lindsay was down at that in miami this week some interesting stuff came out of that corey dubrowa he uh former starbucks comms lead and uh, he's, uh, he went to Salesforce, but he was only there eight months. Now he's off to Google. Interesting. Frank has got some news on WPP's drinking guidelines. Very busy story this week. Facebook, of course, Mark Zuckerberg in front of Congress this week. How did he, he, how did he do? And holding companies have got together to talk about brand safety, an issue close to everyone's heart in PR, and uh, some of the other disciplines getting involved too. So, busy show, but let's start with you, Lindsay. Welcome back. Um, talk us about talk us through the role at Campaign and what you're looking to do uh, in the U.S. and how you're looking to develop the brand over here. Well, it has only been a week and a half, it has. but it's been a busy week and a half. Um, so, I think that Campaign it has such a great footprint globally. It's really respected around the world. Um, I really respect that they go in like some deep dive stories into creativity and marketing, but they also aren't afraid to, you know... You should be saying we now, Lindsay. We? Yes. Well, well, I meant like them like as the UK, <laughs> but for the US, yeah, I want to yeah, yeah. mimic that in the US, but also, you know, do more US focused, obviously, coverage. Um, I want to be able to call BS. See, I didn't curse there. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's yeah. Um, yeah. 
Lindsay, um, for podcast <laughs> listeners, Lindsay was notorious for occasion, the occasional cuss word that yes, says, I, only when quoting people. Myself, yeah. Only when only quoting people. Only time I ever curse. Yes, so indeed. Um, but yeah, so I, I want to be able to show that I do love covering this industry. I think it's an amazing time for the industry, uh, so many interesting things going on. Um, but also being able to do some of the deep analyses, not just celebrating everything, too. Yeah, I mean, Campaign's such a strong brand in Europe, in Asia, and has got a footprint in the US now, but built up over the past three years, and got a great foundation to build on, but really excited to see what you do with it, and we've already seen from the reaction to you coming over, and some of the stories and content you've done already, with Ollie McAteer, mm -hmm. who is... Uh, your uh, reporter, senior reporter, uh, associate editor. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. See, everything's bigger and better in advertising, <laughs> isn't it? Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's going well. And then off to the four A's. So, yeah. What? Tell us about the sort of you were you were at age. We, we all know that, and you, you developed fantastically there as a as a journalist. What were the things that you learnt in the three years? about marketing and communications by sort of covering it from that point of view that you, that, you know you would like to tell the listeners about. <laughs> <laughs> wow, put me on the spot. Um, well, that's, that's what we do here, Lynn. Uh, well, uh, we all know who gets the money. <laughs> it's definitely, well, it'd actually be media, I guess, but then advertising, you know. Uh, but Marketing budgets are much bigger than, right, than PR. PR PR's, what, 9% of the overall marketing spend. Um, and yeah, and obviously PR, Firms, especially, are trying to tap into marketing work too, and, and with some success, but still a long way to go there, yeah. yeah. I mean, Edelman and Weber, for sure, are the ones uh, going in. I mean, I just learned so much. I mean, I was covering consumer marketing at PR Week and talking to a lot of the CMOs about their issues, specifically in communications. So going over there, um, hearing the, like, the issues that agencies are having with the clients, like right now clients are cutting fees, everyone knows that, it's probably the same on the PR side. A little bit, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. So learning that, hearing how agencies have to work together, the media spend and media buy, brand transparency, I and mean, there's just so many, so many things. How are show. creative agencies approaching this? Because we know that TV, broadcast advertising, um, it, it is declining. I mean, consumer habits have changed totally. Young people don't, many, many, People don't even own a TV anymore. Although, to be fair, some budgets we on MM and M we saw um, TV advertising in the pharma sector actually increased, you know, year on year. So there, there is still a lot of money spent on it. So how are they sort of balancing that? Still doing a lot of work on TV, but realizing they have to migrate their businesses really into the world of earned media in a lot of cases. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of digital. You know, digital is just like the word social media, uh, videos, um, you still do see a lot of, I mean, marketers will come over and say, we don't want to do TV. And then when they hire an agency, they, the like, agency will come in with this, you know, idea of digital and really innovative things. And then they're like, we really just want the TV spot. Oh, and <laughs> like, why is that? Like, do they just find it more effective or? I think it's because you have a lot of like legacy, I mean, you're, you're not seeing some of the younger startup, you know, mm -hmm. EV disruptor brands doing that, but you have a lot of the, you know, automotive, the CPG mm. brands. Automotive, pharma, insurance, mm -hmm. uh, CPG, uh, cinema, yeah, still spending vast amounts of money on TV. So, so what can PR people learn from the wider media advertising digital sectors? Sometimes there's a bit of an inferiority complex in the, in the worlds of PR about, about what they do and how, and they're maybe not as bold or confident in the way they approach things. And maybe if a client pushes back, they'll go away and change it. Whereas I suspect that a creative agency might just stand their ground and say, "No, you need to do this." Did you get any sort of Sometimes. perspective on that? I mean, I think it's just different in communications. Um, a lot of times, the comms team is just they're behind the scenes, and it's not like the chief creative officer, Mad Men era. You know, Don Draper walking through the whole now mad women era. There's a ton, there's Absolutely. a lot, there's not a ton. There's still, I think, only 11% uh, women. It, wait, that's why 3% was 3%, now it's 11%. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, it's just there's something about that, you know. But you do have more brands doing in house creative, but it's, I don't think it'll ever go to a point where other agencies won't be there. Whereas comms is kind of like the behind the scenes ones. It's yeah. just the way it is. You mentioned uh, women in advertising, and obviously there's been some very high profile stories over recent years about that and there seems to be a change happening the me too movement has spawned something there you've done a lot of coverage of that and there's um talk us through that because there's some, some quite controversial issues involved in that but in general it seems like a good thing because we're going to get more women especially in the top creative roles 
Yeah, I mean, there's so much to talk about there. I think I'll, I'll go in a positive direction, and I'll, I think Time's Up Advertising uh, is an amazing um, move. It is Just to explain what that is for yeah, uh, those who, who um, are not aware of it. Most people know what Time's Up is. Uh, it was formed after the Harvey Weinstein um, scandal. Uh, it's a nonprofit, um, just ch you know, challenging all of the issues with sexual harassment and gender and inequality and all that. So this was formed. It was the first. This is the first little like mini sector that has gone off from there, and it is. I think it's about 250, maybe 280. Uh, of the top most senior women in advertising. It's amazing. You have like Wendy Clark, the CEO, global CEO of DDB, um, Debbie Reiner, the CEO of Gray New York. I mean, I could just name Colin DeCourcy, Wyden. Like, there's so many amazing women. They actually they came together in January uh, and just decided let's do something where we actually hold ourselves accountable, not just lip service where, you know, we're, we're going to do this. They actually are going to put it publicly on a website after every meeting and see what changes they're going to make and they said the only way to make changes is to be held accountable for it. Yeah, we've seen some high-profile chief creative officers mm -hmm. lose their jobs and because mm -hmm. of issues related to that. How long do you think this sort of, I don't know how to describe it, lancing of the boil, if you like, not, not a pleasant analogy, but <laughs> maybe quite appropriate. How long do you see that going on? Have we got a long way to go yet with that? Or is, you know, is that situation going to calm down? I mean, I think, the, I think there will still be men who will be exposed for bad behavior, for sure. Um, I just because there's a lot. It's a it's male dominated industry. The advertising industry, notoriously, is one where there's partying and there's drugs, there's can, there's you know there, there's power balances, well, imbalances. I never, I never knew any of that went on. That is crazy. <laughs> um, the, I think I mean the power balance is shifting with more women being in leadership. Uh, but if we're looking at stuff that happened ten years ago, five years ago, and even stuff that happens now. I'm still going to go on for, for a bit. Yeah, and there was one, there's some more radical people actually naming and shaming mm -hmm. and websites and on social media sites. What's your take on all that? And, uh, you know, is that just fair game? Is that just sort of payback time? Or is there a danger that people will get caught up in that who actually haven't done anything wrong? Um, I think that what Diet Madison Avenue, you're referring to, it is doing, uh, it's something that was necessary for for the industry, they, they, I'm not saying maybe I agree with everything that they've done. I know that they're controversial, so I'm going to be careful with as what I say, but I, I think that they really did disrupt the industry. They caused a movement. Um, and I mean, I think it was five or six of the people that they've named have been either let go or resigned. Um, I know that some people don't like the anonymity of it, but there's also there's other anonymous sites like Fishbowl is a quote like networking advertising site. Uh, where people just kind of like complain or ask questions um, and yeah I mean I, I think it just it started something whether or not people agree with their methods or tactics it kind of just started this revolution. Yeah, yeah. What do you think Frank I mean about in the PR industry we the you know the, there hasn't been quite the same sort of outing if you like of bad behavior although we have done PR week has done a sexual harassment survey and it has found uh, you know a lot of women um, saying that they have su suffered incidents and repeated incidents. What, what's your take on it within the PR context? Well, I think that there's still a lot to come out here. Uh, I think that a lot of the accusations and allegations that were made against uh, men who behaved badly came out years after they happened. And I think this is going to continue to shake itself out for a while. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this kept, um, if this was in the news cycle for the next few years. Yeah. And I mean, not to like pull this card, but I don't think it is, it's not just for one industry in particular. As a woman, I think any woman in the world has experienced some sort of yeah, sexual sure. harassment. Uh, and then I, what I was, when I was at the four A's, I was at a dinner and a bunch of people asked me, why hasn't this hit the marketing side? Because they were telling me that we know many stories about CMOs and high up people on the brand side that have done things. And do you think that's going to hit next? And I was like, yeah, I do. Yeah, that that's obviously a... A particular relationship, the client agency relationship, and the council, and and, and because they're, you know, you, the the agencies rely on the clients for their billings. I mean, I and remember, the vendors, production, all yeah, that. yeah, for sure. And I remember talking to um, one of Burson's original uh, executives, and they even had, in, way back in the early seventies had a course on how to be, how to react when a client came on to you basically yeah. Yeah. and um, so it's not a new thing and, and as we've all watched Mad Men as well we've, we've seen the sort of historical context there so yeah that is interesting maybe it is because the clients are 
inured to it a little bit through their billing status. It's almost like a power relationship. But yeah, um, talking it, so that's a good segue into the four A's. What um, what sort of trends did you see down there, and what's Sort of the, um, Let me just interrupt for mm -hmm. one second. What are the four A's? Um, the four A's is the Trade Association for uh, Advertising. And no, Notice. but I mean, what are the A's? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either, and I've always wondered that. Okay, go on. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> um, I assume I, one's advertising. Yeah, I'm assuming that's <laughs> Probably one. associations yeah. in there. Okay. Maybe America. It's something like the Association <laughs> of American Adver Advertising Agencies. Oh, that is, that's it. Right. Hey. Okay. Yay. All right. Well, the puzzle's been solved. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. So, because um, you see, there's four words there, and they all begin with A, so they call there it are the a four lot of A's. Words that begin with A. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, um, actually, it's funny. I was talking to Ollie about this. I, there wasn't a lot of coverage about Me Too or anything like that. There, there was some. There were people from Times Up down there and Times Up Advertising down there. Um, there were panels on diversity and inclusion. Uh, my, my, one of my favorite panels was uh, actually the Girls' Lounge put it on, and it was amazing. It was the Parkland students, survivors, came oh, and right, spoke. Okay. It was so inspiring. Because it was so down incredible. in Miami. It was in Florida. Yeah, it's yeah. an hour drive, yeah, from yeah. where they were. Because um, there's a campaign called What If that this, uh, I think he's a freelance um, director, created it. It's amazing. And they all showed up. They all sat on stage. And it was supposed to be in a small room. And it wound up having to be moved to a bigger room because everybody at the conference wanted to see it. There was like people standing in the back. It was incredible, so inspiring. These kids are going to run America. They're incredible. The the way they communicate is amazing, and so, how mature they are, and how yeah, well spoken, how, how good they are in front of the camera with the media. Mm -hmm. They don't get. Uh, they're, they're very emotional, obviously, yeah. due to the context, but they don't. They're not like shouty in, no. the, in the social media sort of way. They're very considered and very, and, and they win a lot of the arguments. So yeah, no, they oh. are incredibly impressive. It was great. Um, and the second thing you did you an know? interview, or well, not an interview, but you there was a session. Artur Sadoun, who's mm -hmm. the uh, global leader of publicists, mm -hmm. took over from uh, Maurice, Maurice Levy. Um, what did he have to say? Some interesting things to say, actually, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Well, so Mark Pritchard, uh, chief brand officer of PNG, was up there, um, and he was also with Debbie Reiner. So don't want to. Uh, leave her out of this as she's the uh, CEO of Great New York, um, president or CEO, CEO of Great New York. Anyway, um, so what Mark did was Mark wanted to, Mark has been cutting fees and slashing budgets and he kind of looks like he's been down on agencies. Um, and this is supposed to kind of be a conference celebrating agencies a bit and uh, how they could work together and solve issues. So everyone was a little nervous about how this was going to go, but um, it was very celebratory. It was actually that day he released news that uh, all their separate agencies like Saatchi, all agencies within Publicis that uh, PNG worked with and uh, some Omnicom agencies, uh, WP agencies are going to work together and they're actually going to co-locate um, in Cincinnati where it's located. Yes, yeah, that's right. It's pretty amazing. Uh, and what Debbie Reiner told me was, she's like, I've worked in this industry for a long time, and I feel like right now is the most collaborative time, and it might be because it is also the most competitive time. She's like, we have to work together. Um, but our tour during the session, to me, what he said the most interesting was, it's like, everyone's talking about agency of the future. I just wrote a feature on that before I left Ad Age. But he's like, what about the client of the future? Because the agencies are all changing, but the clients have to start changing too. And what did he mean by that? What, what, in what ways does he, does he think they need to change? It's quite a brave thing to say, actually, in front of your biggest client, <laughs> <laughs> or one of the biggest advertiser in the world. Well, actually, Mark and him seem pretty tight, because at the Publicis Investor Day in London, um, there was a video where Mark was like praising Publicis, so right, I think right. that they're, they're pretty tight. But, uh, I mean, I think what he was referring to are the fact that they're doing more for less all the time, and they have to start realizing what agencies are going through. I mean, if they want good content and they want the most creative work and the best talent, um, and I mean, Mark was honest that he's not, he's not going to stop cutting fees. It's not like that's going to go away. So just figuring out how to work together with less money. Yeah, because famously they're cutting the marketing spend from eight hundred to four hundred million. It's incredible, chop. You know, mm -hmm. it's not can't be. I mean, it can't be good for our industry, mm -hmm. although maybe it is imposing some discipline that maybe is long overdue. Um, but yeah, interesting stuff. Anything else that came you know, that really oh. struck you at the four A's? Well, uh, John Liguizamo was there, and he was actually at my dinner, and I was with MediaLink. And how do you pronounce that again? Liguizamo. Okay. <laughs> that, that's how I say it. Isn't that how you say it? Frank? Liguizamo. Liguizamo. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Frank. He's an actor. <laughs> Not my expertise, but. Uh... Um, I just saw his one-man show on Broadway. It was great. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. 
Uh, no, it was funny because we were at the dinner at Media Link and uh, I was sitting next to some people from Google and I'm not going to say who they were, but some of the people did not know who he was and they were like, who's that guy that everyone's talking to? And he didn't even introduce himself, but I was like, that's because he's Famous. pretty well known actually. <laughs> <laughs> He, he wasn't going to pull the, do you don't know who I am. Car. We had to go around the table and say who we were, and he said, I am Arnold Schwarzenegger's half-son or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the only other thing you took out of the, no, apart I mean, from I ice cream going, in Miami keep, and 85 degree temperatures. Uh, and, you know, and a little suntan. Uh, a little dancing is good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool, uh, sounds good, and you can check out the coverage on, uh, well, we picked up the most relevant stuff uh, that you did in terms of communications uh, for PR Week, but you can see it all on campaignlive.com as well. Frank, uh, the big story this yes. week, Corey Dubrawa leaving, well, tomorrow is his last day, Friday, and he's leaving Salesforce after just eight months to yeah, go to Google. It's, I, it's only a surprise because he spent a short time at uh, Salesforce, but Corey's obviously one of the more uh, respected folks out there, not only in tech PR, but I, I think in consumer PR, and so, you know, he gets one of the biggest uh, jobs out there right now. So, yeah, congratulations, Sam. Yeah, it must have been a big decision to leave somewhere yes. helmed by someone as charismatic as Mark Benioff. You right, know, and, and somebody who I, I think, if, if you know Corey a little, sort of believes in a lot of the same things that, that he does in terms of social good and how companies should behave and things like that. Uh, and also a, just a company that's growing so much year on year in Salesforce. Yeah, I mean, when they have their Dreamforce uh, mm. event in San Francisco, it pretty much takes over the city. Yeah, it? just they a tremendously influential company. And they have uh, even have boats now moored off off the uh, in in the well, in wherever um, to to uh, deal with the overflow. <laughs> <laughs> Lost the plot there. Um, yeah, interesting. And but I guess it's it, it's either a case of I don't know. It's either the case that Google came calling and it was mm. something he couldn't turn down, or maybe maybe he didn't quite. You know, maybe the culture there wasn't. I have no evidence to 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 think that. But um, yeah, interesting new role, and uh, yeah, there'll be a team of about two hundred communicators that he's yes. working with over there. So interesting stuff. What about these new drinking guidelines yes. at WPP, Frank? That's interesting a, story you wrote. Really was. I'd like to say it's the product of uh, months of undercover work, um, <laughs> but it's not uh, under, under bar work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a memo. And uh, the sad news about it is that the drinks trolleys are are no longer allowed at WPP agencies, which is really sad. Yeah, the, the drinks trolley. I can't say I've ever seen one, but uh, well, that's. The, the picture accompanying the piece of the Mad Men pick is a good right. one. Roger Sterling and Don Draper drinking from the drinks trolley. From the drinks what trolley the itself. Bars? Well, okay, so this is where we get into the nitty gritty of the, the new uh, arrangements. So, uh, because to just explain, a lot of agencies have in house bars and bartenders, and bartenders, right? Especially in London, actually, but <laughs> but, it's, but they do in, uh, in, in the US as well, and that's fine as long as the folks who are drinking at these bars are of legal drinking age. And if somebody gets too intoxicated, they should get a free ride home, and uh, everything else should be on the normal up and up. Uh, so which it's an incentive to get intoxicated, isn't it? Free yeah. ride home. <laughs> uh, but, so, anyway, I'm not this yeah. So, um, but what it does mean is that people should not be drinking at their desks or in their offices or uh, things of that nature. So, yeah, something uh, something a lot of people are buzzing about. The this irony week. was that this story came out like a day or two after <coughs> the investigation into mm -hmm. Sir Martin Sorrell was announced. So. It did, it did, and I, I've been told, and I believe this, that that was purely a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, as somebody at WPP told me, we just really this is a quote: "We just really stink at timing." So, um, <laughs> yeah, I tend to think that's the truth. Yeah, I think the other thing is it's trying to move away from that culture that you right. know, ends up in Me Too style behavior, doesn't it, you know, alcohol. Right, and I, I didn't get into this in the article. And If you go back a few months to before Christmas, I mean, there was so much discussion, I think, in the agency world about, you know, should Christmas parties have alcohol? Should, um, you know, are we creating an environment where this kind of behavior is encouraged by having too much alcohol at these things? So it, it's almost a throwback to a couple months there. Yeah, and also uh, it's a very global company, and there are right. many parts of the world where alcohol is either not, you know, people don't drink, you know, in Muslim yeah. countries or other countries where it's not so much part of the culture. Um, and it did tend to breed a sort of laddish culture, didn't it? Or that you could be excluded if you didn't. 
drinking wasn't your thing, and so right. you weren't part of the crowd, or you you didn't you weren't part of the, the the networking social side that helped you make those connections within a company that helped you rise up. And so I think I can see the logic behind it completely. There's the team building element of it. Um, Did you see the mother altar? thing. No. It's kind of like a little quirky. Tell us. They, they said have a drink on mother. Oh yeah. Because they're like yeah. kind of sick of like the harsh guidelines. So instead they did like an altar campaign. Oh, and that's not, an, that's not a WPP company. No, right. no. But uh, we, we, we still allow drinking at the desks at PL, well not PL week at Haymarket don't we? Well speak <laughs> for yourself. Well, <laughs> well, we have I haven't our, been caught well, yet. We have uh, one of our infrequent drinks uh, um, events, right? Most a lot of people just go back to their desk and drink at the desk. It's more as sort the same of same thing. At age, yeah. I mean, if you're there till like nine at night and you yeah. have a bottle of wine next to you, just nine at night, Lindsay. Like, no. Yeah, we did that when you were on PR. <laughs> What's going on? I'm not telling you where my stash is. If that's what you're getting at. But. I know where your hot sauce is, and it's more important. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Well, we've, <laughs> we've certainly seen a few bottles of champagne flying through the door uh, and landing on Lindsay's desk since news of her appointment was announced. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Frank, what did you make of Mark um, Zuckerberg's performance in front of Congress? He seemed to get pretty good reviews, actually. Yeah, pretty good. Um, look, I, I, as a fellow introvert, I, can, I uh, <laughs> can identify with how difficult it must be to be up there in front of all these, I don't see what's funny about that, <laughs> um, in, in front of all those cameras. And, um, the shy, retiring you know, Frank Washington. Yeah, you know, uh, but in, he, he was, I mean, he was up there for five or six straight hours. He managed to go through it without any major mistakes, which is much easier said than done. Um, was he wearing his hoodie, Frank? No, he wasn't. But he does, he does look a little awkward in a suit, I mean, if we're being it's honest. Or natural. maybe it's us. Maybe we're just not used to seeing him in a suit. Yeah. Um, but well, I thought famous, he did pretty well. His first big public interview was with Recode, wasn't it? Right. Or Kara Swisher, or whatever it was before it was Recode. And he was sweating. He was so, yeah. obviously so nervous. Yeah. And he hadn't done it before. He was sweating really badly. He was wearing a hoodie and a T-shirt. And she asked him if she, he wanted to take his hood. Yeah. His, his, <laughs> anyway. I do, think he, I do think he came off as reasonable, though. Yeah, it's and I think a lot of people do. You know, because some people, when you get them in that situation, get very abrasive, don't right. they? And and he managed. He was. And the other thing that came up is the the senators. How much do they actually know about this stuff? How tech savvy are they? And there was a call. Well, for not that. much. I mean, and it was and it was fairly em embarrassing as as yeah. a voter, I guess you could say, uh, to to watch some of this. The, I think on Monday, and I mean, some of the questions from from the senators were just just so all over the place. You know, the House was a bit better, and you know, there are a lot of reasons why that's the case. But um, yeah, so he had not to spend a lot of time yeah. just almost explaining. You know he what? Did I, it very yeah, patiently. and you know what I think he did really well was that he. He was defensive enough, but respectful enough, which isn't a very easy thing to do. So, so for somebody who's not a natural to that no, situation, he did pretty well. No, good for him. Just yeah. like shares were up afterwards. Yeah. So. yeah, so it just goes to show how important that is as a CEO skill, mm -hmm. communications. And good order um, is important. Yeah, no, that's absolutely. I mean, we saw with Hope Hicks when she was up in front of Right. being grilled for a number of hours. Yeah, he, he didn't acknowledge telling white lies. Zuckerberg yeah, exactly. Yeah. There was no mo and, and when you're there for an, five hours, it's very difficult to be completely perfect on sure. every question, even for podcasters like ourselves. <laughs> yes, introverted ones yes, like us. Indeed. Yes. All right, so yeah, in, in general, good reviews for Mark Zuckerberg, and it's uh, worked out well for his company. Um, holding companies and brand safety. Brand safety is a massive issue. It's yeah. a big reputation issue. It's a big technology issue. But uh, the holding companies have got together to talk about that this yeah, week. Yeah, they're teaming up, and they're going to have um, almost like an alert system where uh, if a brand's ad is seen to be um, in a place of the Internet that is uh, untoward or unsafe for, ch for kids or something like that, um, you know, they would notify one another about it even if they're not partners, mm -hmm. so to speak. So, it's called the uh, Advertising Protection Bureau, and it was the media um, holding, it was the media agencies at the holding company, yeah. specifically UM Worldwide's new, um, newly appointed chief brand safety officer is the one that came up with the It's idea. something that's needed, in my opinion. That's, There's that's, just too many of these brand yeah, safety but, incidents um, coming you, You're right, Lindsay, it is being led by the media agencies, mm -hmm. and you can see why that is, because mm -hmm. they're buying the media that well, goes yeah, on like, to these. You know, if you're Toyota, you don't want your spot to be up next to, like, a terrorist spot or something. Of course not, something, no, you know? yeah. So um, but the, but the, the role chief brand safety officer is an interesting one to me yeah. because you could say that that's what the chief communications officer's role is yes as well. And, so, yeah. Yes, you know, and no, I mean, but it comes down to media. I think like media, like 
is so complicated. There's so many parts I don't even understand with media planning yeah. buying that I, like, there are so many brands right now figuring out should they have a media officer in house too, just to like understand mm -hmm. like the, especially digital media. You don't even can trace where the money goes. It's a whole yeah, the programmatic thing. element right. to it. So, but I think there should be good coordination between oh, the CCOs and the uh, but an inter interesting job title. Someone we should talk to yeah. actually. So yeah, great stuff. Listen. Really enjoyed getting the old gang back together and look forward to doing so <laughs> moving forwards. Frank, thank you. Of course. Lindsay, it's great to have you back. Thank you. Genuinely is. And we're uh, really looking forward to working with you again and seeing what you do. You're incredibly talented and um, you know, doing a great job already. So keep it up. A couple of customer service things. The brand Film Festival, Woo! which will be co-presented by myself <laughs> and Lindsay. Uh, it's on May the 3rd in uh, the Paley Media Center in New York City. And it's a joint uh, effort between PR Week and Campaign. Some really great films this year, actually. I was, I was viewing some of them earlier this week and uh, some great work. So do come along to that. It's going to be a great event. And there's some workshops in the afternoon as well where we get some of the filmmakers and agencies and clients together and really sort of get into the weeds of what makes a good brand film, how you measure the return on investment, etc. So it's going to be great. Um, the Global Awards, PR Week Global Awards, are in London on May the 15th. Um, again, some great work, really great campaigns being celebrated there. So uh, do come to that if you can make it. The 40 Under 40 list is out for submissions, so get your brightest talent signed up for that and make sure they're getting their submissions in. And finally, we are going to Chicago. PR Week is going to Chicago for our annual conference in October, October the 18th, um, at the, Merch the Merchandise Mart. Really looking forward to visiting Chicago and taking the show on the road and a lot of excitement up there already. But that's all we got time for. We'll see you next time on the PR Week.